It's time for a fall haul. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. So I've not done a book haul in a long time and I used to avoid doing them on my channel because I kind of felt bad about the amount of books that I was buying. But um, I just got a new bookshelf. You can, we'll swing the frame around to over there. Um, it's blank. It's just one from Target just because I have a lot of overflow of books. Yeah, I think that like I just need to preface this book haul video with saying that I am a book collector and I enjoy buying books as much as I enjoy reading them and I also read a lot every year like 100 to 200 books so it makes sense that I have a large book collection I also get sent a decent amount of books and I go through and I unhaul things quite regularly as well but with that being said I love stories I love books and I love a lot of books a lot of books I give five stars and they stick with me for a long time so that means my collection of books that I love is quite large so I do try to make it so that I'm only buying the books that I think that I will 100% enjoy and love forever and cherish that's still a lot of books and also sometimes like I will read books on Kindle Unlimited and through the library and whatnot and then I end up enjoying them so much that I want to buy a physical copy to batch. So that is how we have ended up with a lot of different things here. Um, so I'm going to go through different categories. I literally have piles around me on the floor. See, We have romance, arcs, fantasy romance, and then a bunch of hardcover as well as some special editions. So I think I'm going to go through in that order. Oh, and then some regular paperback and a small pile of nonfiction. So we'll go through all of that. I will give brief descriptions of each one and we'll just we'll just bask in the glory of all of the books that I bought and that I need to somehow fit into my apartment. But that's why I bought a new shelf. Okay, let's start straight off with the romance because it is the pile that is closest to me. I had to get this one when I saw it listed for sale because I love Sally Thorne. She wrote The Hating Game and this is her new one. Angelica Frankenstein makes her match. So it is about Frankenstein's sister Angelica and she's basically helping her brother Victor Frankenstein and basically I think she like kind of falls in love with the monster so I am so excited I read Frankenstein in school and I love this like kind of new twist on the classic tale so I will be definitely picking this up in October because it's perfect for spooky season. Next up I bought Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren because I saw some really great reviews and it's supposed to be a friends to lovers or like friends to strangers to lovers type romance um, where they were like friends when they were little and then something happened to set them apart and now they've run into each other again and it's alternating timelines between then and now. I love that kind of story and I think it's gonna be heartbreaking and wonderful and I've heard really good things about this book. When this book popped up on Knack Alley, I knew I had to pre-order it right away. It is an enemy to lovers set in like a STEM lab. He used to be her PhD advisor and then she's like, I am free of this man when she graduates with her PhD, but then there's some sort of lab accident and then they have to work next to each other on the lab benches and it's enemy to lovers and STEM and I I am a STEM girly myself, so STEM romances, they just get me going, you know? STEM romances are just like super special to me, which is why I love Allie Hazelwood so much. Um, but yeah, very excited to read this one. I had to buy Beach Read by Emily Henry after I read People We Meet on Vacation because I want to read all of her books. This follows two authors, January and Augustus, and Gus is like a lit fic author and January is a romance writer, and they basically end up as neighbors. Um, they knew each other in college and they're both in these writing slumps so they dare each other to like switch genres and write the genre that the other person writes and it's their romance it's very beautifully written and i'm definitely an emily henry fan now if you see all of my tabs um so i have all of her books that i'm also going to haul right now well i i hauled people we meet on vacation in my last haul i did so that one i already have but here you can see i have book lovers by emily henry i haven't read this one yet but it's about nora who is a literary agent and charlie who is an editor and they have like some sort of like history of not liking each other and then they run into each other somewhere and it's their romance so emily henry has not let me down yet so I'm hoping that trend can continue. Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This was sent to me by the publisher. It's a small town romance between Naomi, who basically runs from the altar on the day of her wedding and goes to this small town because her 
twin sister needs her help and then she goes to the small town and her twin sister steals her car and also leaves her with the niece that she knew nothing about and it's her romance between local grumpy guy Knox and I've heard it's just heartwarming and sweet and I feel like this is getting really popular everywhere and I'm excited for this one. Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I already read this and loved it. We follow B and Levi. Basically they were in the same lab in their PhD and she thought that like he hated her and then they end up working together um, on this project for NASA and she basically like needs help navigating the corporate landscape and he helps her and I loved it like I said I love STEM romances so I was so excited for this one and it delivered. Barbarian Lover and Barbarian Mind by Ruby Dixon these are the three and four in the Ice Planet Barbarian series, which are getting these beautiful covers, I'm collecting all of these. I think I hauled the first two in my last haul. So yeah, as these are released, I will be buying them. I've read up to book number nine, and I will continue on with the series at some point. I do want to read all of them. Um, so I will get to that eventually. But yes, as these come out, they are mine. Set on You by Amy Leah. I had to buy this, like as soon as soon as i saw it for sale it's about a plus size fitness influencer and it's set in boston and it's her romance with this grumpy firefighter that is at her gym and so like i am a lifter myself and i just love this i thought it had such a great body positivity slash body neutrality message and the romance was so sweet and steamy and it just made me feel really seen um and this this book is really special to me for that reason Next up for romance is My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. I love Tessa Bailey. I've been following along all that she has been doing and this is her newest released indie romance so she published it on her own. It's like such a cute size and the cover is very like buttery soft. And as you can see from all of my tabs, I absolutely loved it. We follow Taylor who is a second grade teacher and goes to Cape Cod for a vacation getaway with her brother and basically like they get to their airbnb and they find a body then this bounty hunter comes and he's hired by the family to do like a private investigation and she gets caught up in the case and with him so it's like murder mystery romance super steamy as i have come to expect from tessa billy and i loved it here we have dating dr dill by nisha sharma i follow her on tiktok and she's just a gem i love her i'm very excited to pick this one up it is a retelling of the taming of the shrew i believe so here we follow karima and she basically is entering into a deal with her father where she will get to get her late mother's house instead of him selling it if she gets engaged within four months um, but then an argument goes viral between her and the host of the show dr dill and basically he is like losing his funding because of this argument so then if like they can convince the world that they are together he will get his funding back and she will get her house so yes i really want to read it i've heard there's some interesting spicy scenes that i really want to read and everything about this just sounds amazing. Here we have Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thomas, and I was sent this one. I did start reading it in August, and I just wasn't in the mood for a rom-com at the moment, so I did put it down, but that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna pick it back up again. Um, we have this girl, Phoebe, who is obsessed with true crime, and she moves to her late father's house to like get it ready to sell, and she thinks that her neighbor is a serial killer, but he could be something worse, a nice guy that she could fall in love with. So I feel like it's going to give like the true crime rom-com vibes. So I have two books for this one. This is the arc of the American Roommate Experiment and this is the finished copy. I haven't read it yet but I love the Spanish Love Deception and so I was so... It's actually a pretty decent size difference between the two. Um, I love the Spanish Love Deception. This is the follow-up and we follow Rosie and Lena's cousin Lucas and they become roommates and she's writing a romance novel and gets in a uh, slump and so he takes her on dates and stuff like that to help her rekindle the flame and so I'm really happy that I have both of these. I liked to collect arcs for like my favorite series. I got this at ALA which is in my ALA haul if you want to check that out where I got a bunch of arcs but yes very excited to have a finished copy now. Circling Back to You by Julie Tu. This is supposed to be like super cute rom-com vibes. Basically, we have these two co-workers and they're kind of both bogged down by their families and then they go on this business trip that brings them both in their hometown. So Matt enlists Cadence to be his fake girlfriend to impress his family. And so this kind of forces these two friends to see each other in a new light. So it's friends to lovers in a office setting. 
Here we got the Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, which I actually won from a giveaway by Books with Krista. So thank you so much, Krista, for sending this to me. And I really wanted to read this for a while, so it seems perfect. Basically, like everyone gets food poisoning at this wedding, besides for the best uh, man and the maid of honor because they both have like dietary restrictions or something like that. So they are the only two that don't get sick and the honeymoon is not refundable. So they go on the honeymoon, but they hate each other. But then things ensue. The Magical Lemon Drop Pie by Rachel Linden was sent to me by the publisher. And it's an uplifting novel about a heartbroken young pie maker who's granted a magical second chance to live the life that she did not choose. So now I want to get to the ARC pile and I will premise this pile by saying that most of them were either sent to me by the publisher because I requested them or I got them at ALA which is the Annual Library Association conference I went to in June and there's just every publisher booth there and they just hand out ARCs like candy basically. It's amazing. Just know that's how I got all of these. So I'm very excited about this one. This is The Luminaries by Susan Dennard and this one is really cool because she like kind of wrote it with help of like her Twitter followers so she would like pitch things and then the Twitter followers would choose like how it was going to go next and now it's a book. It's about the luminaries and they're like this ancient society that guards the town of Hemlock and you can't find it on the map and your phone won't work there. Winnie Wednesday is in exile and she wants to prove herself by taking the warrior test. She turns to her ex-ex friend Jay Friday for help but then they discover a danger looking in the forest so like Yes, love the, the whole dangerous forest, spooky vibe. Perfect for spooky season. A Line in the Sand by Terry Wilson. I just wanted this book because of the dog on the cover. I follow Molly Prince and she is like a mermaid for a at an aquarium. And then this is her love interest who is a marine biologist at said aquarium. Cuteness will ensue. The Wicked Remain by Laura Pohl, which is the sequel to The Grimrose Girls, which I read as an arc last year and I thought it was so cute and and I really enjoyed it. Um, so the, we have the Grimrose Academy and all of the girls here are kind of like cursed to represent different fairy tale characters and there's like this book that they find that like show them their journeys and what's going to happen and we in the first book followed four girls and basically their friend was murdered or like has gone missing and they're trying to figure out like what is going on and what all of their fairy tale fates are so I think it's a really interesting premise and I thought it was a really good mix of like dark academia and like fairy tales and all of that stuff so really looking forward to the sequel because we definitely left some questions unanswered in the first one. So this one is The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. This book came out like two years ago and I got the art from the publisher and I loved it when I read it and then I got a finished copy and then I sent this copy to Keely. Vampire Keely. Ghost of Thrunt Her. But Keely didn't like it so I was like well can I have it back for my collectione? And then she's like yes take it off of my hands please I saved it for you instead of getting rid of it. So and it's signed. To Keely, but that's close enough to Katie for me. Um, but yes. I love this book so much. I'm very excited to put it back in my collection of arcs that are treasured. Uh, Fat Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. I got this at ALA and is it signed? No, it's not. Oh, she signed um, Our Violet Delights. But this is like the follow up story to these Violent Delights. I love these Violent Delights. Haven't read the follow-up yet, but I, I will, and then I will eventually read this one as well. I also have Nightbirds by Kate J. Armstrong. I just love, love, love this cover. There are these girls called the Nightbirds, and they wield the most powerful magic ever, and they emerge from the shadows to change their fate. And so basically, like, they're in this house, and they're meant to, like, marry great lords of these houses and become mothers to the next generation of Nightbirds, but they're, like, this very well-kept secret. And they basically, like, kind of realize that the system is actually pretty much a cage, and they try to break free of it. So here I have two arcs by Bridget Kemmerer, Forging Silver into Stars, which is the continuation of A Curse of Dark and Lonely trilogy, and this one is now following Ty, and it takes place five years after the first series end. So I really liked this one. I feel like Bridget Kemmerer just like does such a good job weaving politics with emotions, and I love all of her books. Then we have Defend the Dawn. So this one I was sent, and this one I got at ALA. Um, and this is the follow-up to Defy the Night, which was one of my top books of last year. And the sequel, we head out onto the open seas, and so I just loved like the continuation of the plot and like 
I'm just obsessed with the series and I can't wait to see where it goes. So um, yeah, I have my little collection of her arcs and I also have Defy the Night. So I'm like slowly kind of collecting her arcs. Not that I'm gonna like seek out ones that I don't have, but as I get them, I'll probably hang on to them because I love the series. And I did have an arc of A Hearts of First and Broken that I got at BookCon, but I pass it on to someone because I was being generous. Um, but yeah, I have these. Okay, this book I got at ALA and it's Belladonna by Adeline Grace. I'm not gonna say much because I'm gonna haul it later in my like YA books, but this was one of my top books of the year. So now that I have like the arc, it's gonna like stay in my collection because I know it's a favorite. So I like that I get to have an arc in my collection. Wild is the Witch by Rachel Griffin. I will explain what this one is about later because I also have a finished copy. The Stand In by Lily Chu. This is um, about Gracie and then she gets fired and basically she looks exactly like this movie star and this movie star is in a fake relationship. So they hire Gracie to like basically take the place of the famous movie star and then she starts falling for the guy that the movie star is in a fake relationship with. Here is another one that I own the finished copy of. But this book was source of much controversy on Book Talk recently, um, which I will not be commenting on, but I did read the book as an arc because I got it at ALA. And so I think I'm just gonna hold on to it for the memories because I feel like it's pretty cool to have a, for a book that <laughs> has caused controversy. Here I have Ledge by Stacey McEwen. Um, and the tagline is stay the frost, watch the chasm, the cold is not alive. And at last, last arc that I have is A Strange and Stubborn Endurance by Foz Meadows. Vel is basically supposed to marry this girl from a neighboring kingdom to like form an alliance, but he's afraid if it gets out that he actually prefers men that that alliance will be over. But then they come up with a solution and he's gonna marry the woman's brother instead. But the brother, Katheri, is like shocked because he's from a kingdom where relationships between men are forbidden. And then there's an unknown faction that's like willing to kill them for their relationship. So yeah, I mean this one just seems like so cool. I know Maddie read it and she said it was amazing, but there are trigger warnings for like sexual assault in the first chapter. So just be careful if you read it. So I have a few nonfiction books to haul really quickly. Okay, so the first one that I have is The Ice Pick Surgeon, Murder, Fraud, Sabotage, Piracy, and Other Dastardly Deeds Perpetrated in the Name of Science by Sam Keen. I've been reading all of his books as they come out. I think that they are really cool. They take on different topics in science and they talk about like the ethics and the people behind the discoveries. So it kind of is like the stories and the history of scientific discoveries. And this one is basically all about like people that have committed murder in the name of science and kind of looking at like the ethics and like the different factors that were in play for these things and it's super interesting. I just read like a chapter every now and then so I'm like going really slow, I'm only like halfway through, but I like to have like a non-fiction book that I can just pick up and read a little bit of here and there. The next book that I have is The World's Greatest Backyard Games by Matthew Greer. This is a friend of mine and he wrote a book about backyard games. So if you guys like backyard games, you should check it out. It goes into the history of all the different games, where they're from and how to play them. Okay, next I got The Radium Girls, The Dark Story of America's Shining Woman by Kate Moore. Again, I love sciencey books, especially books that talk about like ethics and science together. Um, and I've always been really intrigued by the story. So basically they used to make like glowing watch faces out of radium before they knew that radioactivity caused cancer and all that stuff. And so there were these women that worked in the radium clock watch face factory and all of a sudden like all of them begin to like fall mysteriously ill and basically they all have radiation poisoning and like the things that happen to them are gruesome. And it's like a really like terrible story of what happened to these women but Again, like I said, I'm really interested in like science nonfiction books and I feel like this is a must read for me. On that same note, I picked up The Emperor of All Miladies, a biography of cancer by Siddhartha Mukherjee, and this one won the Pulitzer Prize. So clearly it's good. And it basically delves into like the, the history of like all of cancer. And you know, I like, I took a class on the biology of cancer in college and I, 
think it would be really interesting to like again i really like that intersection of like ethics and history and science and learning like not just what the discoveries that were made but like how they were made and i think that this book is going to provide that for me and obviously it won the pulitzer prize so like it's good so this will again be like a book that i read very very slowly where i just have it on my nightstand and like read a chapter here and there Oh, I do have one more nonfiction. So this one is Ordinary Heroes, a memoir of 9-11 by Joseph Pfeiffer, first FDMY chief at the World Trade Center. And I want to read this because the author is my uncle. <laughs> so obviously I have a personal connection to this story. And I think that like reading about 9-11 from the perspective of the people that are there is crazy. So yeah. Okay, let's go into fantasy romance, um, specifically more so like indie fantasy romance. First up, we have The High Mountain Court by A.K. Mulford. We follow Remy, who is possibly the last Red Witch alive, and the Northern Court King has like slaughtered basically all of the other Red Witches and placed a bounty on her head. And so these Fey warriors enter the tavern that she's at and she meets Prince Hale of Eastern Kingdom and he wants to stop a war with the Northern Court and he needs a Red Witch because the Northern Court is going to do the same thing to his family that he did to the Red Witches. And then they have to go on a journey to find some lost relics. So yeah, I mean, I, you guys all know that I love fantasy romance. I'm going to be doing a dedicated fantasy romance series on my channel coming up soon. But yeah, I saw this at Barnes & Noble and I was like, it's a sign. I need to pick it up. The next fantasy romance I have to talk about is quite a large one, but I'm really excited to get to it eventually. It is A Queen's Game by Ari Lee, and I follow her on TikTok and she is just the gem and I'm so excited for this. I got some pre-order goodies. So this like little bookmark and a recipe card. I think it's adorable. So we follow three main characters, Marietta, Valeria, and Elise. Marietta is a half, half elven commoner abducted and forced into marriage to an elven lord. Valeria is a queen without power, undermining the husband she loathes for the legacy she craves. And Elise is a lady with untold potential, determined to remain unseen. And then all three of their stories collide. Yes. Court of the Vampire Queen by Katie Robert. I was sent this and it is on my fall TBR because vampires. Yes, and Katie Robert just writes like the de most delicious smut. So this is actually like three novellas in one and I want to read it because I love Katie Robert. And so why choose romance with vampires? That's all you really need to know. Bow Before the Elf Queen by J.M. Curl. I love this. It was a really interesting take on Faded Mates. So Leala is in hiding all of her life to hide from her faded mate, but then the high elf king Thane has come to like steal her back, quote unquote. But now that she's come face to face with what she's been told her whole life, to fear she realizes that he is not the kind of person that she's been told that he is, um, and but he's determined to get her to marry him and complete the bond. Do we have one that I really want to get to soon? It's A Kingdom of Stars and Shadows by Holly Renee. And it's actually pretty short, but I really want to get to it. It's about this girl that is betrothed to a crown prince. Um, and then she gets there and she is finding herself drawn to his brother, who also happens to be her bodyguard while she's there. So love that. Also, I love that the chapter header pages are like super black and dark. Next is a series that I have both books for, What Lies Beyond the Veil and What Hunts Inside the Shadows. I have been really enjoying this series so far. This book just came out and this book came out in like May. Um, so we follow Estrella and there is this veil separating the human realm from the fey realm and basically the veil falls down and everyone that has a fey mate is like marked. But people don't want the humans to, to go and be mated to the fey because then it becomes, makes the fey more powerful so then there are people that are hunting down the fey marked and killing them. So she's basically on the run after that and things get twisty and go from there. I think there's going to be six books in the series total so I'm really enjoying collecting these and there are some cool uh, illustrated edition like illustrated edition covers that are coming out soon that I also want to add to my collection. Now this series is just like everything to me even though I've only read the first book I'm definitely going to continue on with it soon and that is Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wisecup um, and Between Despair and Hope and I follow her on TikTok and she's just an absolute gem of a human. In this book it's basically set up that we follow Emmeline Highclere and she used to have a relationship with the prince 
16 years ago she fled and no one really knew like what happened to her and then her daughter is kidnapped and she's basically being kept under wraps because she has these secret powers that like she's not supposed to have so she goes to petition the prince who was her former lover to help her find her daughter so it's a fantasy romance like about a mother who's in her 30s and she's mid-size and like it's just beautiful and i feel like there are not enough fantasy romance stories that follow women that are mothers or in their 30s so i just absolutely love to see that i am excited to pick this one up um but i'm afraid it's gonna rip my heart out but soon i will be picking it up the night and its moon by piper cj i saw that barnes and noble was doing an exclusive edition of this and it seemed cool and then the the like sprayed edges almost make it look like it's an old book which i think is kind of cool there's this orphanage um but really like they're the orphans are for sale, so Knox and Amaris know better. Knox ends up going to a brothel while Amaris is drawn away to the mountain's home of mysterious assassins, and then they just spend their life trying to reunite. Then I have this series here, which is A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher with the new covers, um, Heart of Fire, Breath of Fire, and then the Next book in the series, A Curse of Queens, and this is an arc because it comes out in October. So this is a fantasy romance that's been around for a few years, but it got picked up by Sourcebooks Casablanca, so they are like reprinting it, or it was always with them, and they're reprinting it because book talk loves fantasy romances. Um, but yeah, we see the two main characters here. So Kat is a kingmaker, and she is able to divine truth through lies, and so this warlord wants her for his own, so he kidnaps her, wants to bring her back to his kingdom, and that is all I really know, and I just think it's going to be really cool and amazing and I love these new covers so I'm excited to delve into this whole series. This last one isn't fantasy romance but it's like historical dark romance so I figured I would kind of group it together but it's Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. Um, I do think that this book has a ton of content warnings so just please look them up before you pick it up. See so yeah, it takes place in 1714. There is this pirate that is hunting her and she's on the run from him and yes. Okay before we get to all of the hardcovers that I've acquired Let's go over some paperback books. Here I have some books that are on loan because I need to start being frugal at some point, right? Um, and that is Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. Um, I don't know the order of these. Shadow Kiss and Frostbite. And yeah, these are like the original covers. So I will be reading these in preparation for the show. Thank you, Taz, for lending these to me. And I'm very excited because I feel like these are a classic and I didn't read them when they first came out and so I'm excited to read them today and like live in that nostalgia. Next is Verity by Colleen Hoover. As you can see by the bookmark I read like three pages and then put it down because I just um, wanted to pick up something else more I think at the moment. Yeah but um, I will be reading this soon. So this is like Colleen Hoover's very well-known thriller and we follow Lowen, who basically is a struggling writer on the brink of financial ruin and then she gets offered to move in to this house and finish the remaining books in a successful series for this woman named Verity and so she's like in the house and she like starts to discover some like really interesting things and yeah that's all I know about that but like I feel like this is just like really well known and everyone says that it's like really like scary and thrilling and I want to experience that for myself. Here we have When the Stars Come Out by Scarlett St. Clair. I also got this cool sticker with it. It's like iridescent on camera. This is her Orpheus and Eurydice um, retelling YA. So her Hades and Persephone series that's new adult like is really successful so they decided to print her YA like with a new cover. The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. This is a YA thriller about some girls that get lost in the woods. I really wanted to pick this up the spooky season. I don't know if I will get to it because it just seems like a book that's gonna take a long time to read. But that is House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. It's like a really like thick and heavy book and it like has some very interesting formatting so I don't know if it's actually like as long as it says it is um but yeah it's like this really interesting like multimedia story and I've heard it's like actually one of the scariest books ever some people have said that so I don't know um I feel like it's a book that you're gonna have to like read and then rethink and then I don't know it just seems very intense we'll see 
The Abandoned Empress Volume 1 by Ina, original story by Yuna. So this is a webcomic, um, I think a Korean manhwa that was published and in full color. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I need to get the other volumes. I'm collecting them slowly because they are kind of expensive. They're only like $20 each. Um, but yeah, so we have Artista. And she's a child of prophecy and she's basically like raised to be the future empress and she goes to the palace and is betrothed to the emperor but like he doesn't really seem to care about her and then like he says that he finds this other woman that is actually the prophesized person and she gets sentenced to death for not being the foretold and but when she dies she wakes up again um in her 10 year old body and so she has to like relive her life and try to like fix the mistakes that led to her execution um and yeah it's really beautiful art and like a very interesting story and i really want to continue on with this series and then lastly we have buzzfeed unsolved supernatural 101 true tales of hauntings demons and the paranormal by ram Bagar and shane Maday. i have been a fan of buzzfeed unsolved since the beginning and i'm really excited that they're now starting their own series like on their own production uh unit or whatever and I have tickets to go see them live next week, so I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, this is just basically, I think, like them talking more about like all of the different episodes and things that they did, and I've seen every single episode. So I'm really excited to like read about them again because I just, yeah, I love them. I'm actually, I'm gonna put this on my bedside table now so I can like pick it up and read like a chapter. It's like really short, just like a page per like each location they went to. So I think it'll be good to just kind of like pick up and read here and there. Okay, now moving on to hardcover. I'm gonna do regular hardcovers and then special editions. So firstly, we have Belladonna by Adeline Grace. I just read this and it's literally like a new all-time favorite. <laughs> I am obsessed with it. The writing is so beautiful. This is like what the case looks like on the first print edition. Yes, I also have an exclusive edition that I will show later. Cigna has been able to see death her whole life um, and so and she's an orphan and she gets passed around from family member to family member until finally she comes to Thorn Grove with the Hawthorns and they're suffering from the loss of the mother of the family has recently passed away and then the daughter is sick with the same illness and the father just throws these extravagant parties to cope and the son is like kind of trying to hold the family together so Cigna kind of gets tossed into this mess and basically she can see the ghost of the mother and is convincing her that like something is not right here and she has to use her abilities to see death and to see spirits to kind of figure out what's going on so I like to describe it as like a YA gothic fantasy romance with a hint of mystery and it just brought all those elements together so seamlessly and it was just beautiful and obsessed. This is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. I wasn't sure how I felt about this cover redesign, but now that I have it in my hands in person, I actually really like it and I think it works really well. Oh, look at that. There's a quote on the cover. It's pretty cool. So I think this is about the wife of Dracula and it's like told in letters that she writes and there are other consorts and the, like the kind of consorts come together to like figure out like what is going on with Dracula and all the bad stuff that he's doing. So. Sounds amazing. Defend the Dawn by Roger Kimmerer, sequel to Divine the Night. It arrived in the mail, my Barnes & Noble exclusive. Has these really cool end pages. This flower on the case. There's the side there. And then it also came with an annotated chapter at the end. So I, yeah, I've been uh, collecting the BNN exclusive for the series. Wild is the Witch. This is another one that I had an arc of and then said that I had the finished copy. So now I can give you this feel. This is what the hardcover case looks like. Um, we have Iris who is a witch and works with her mother at this like conservatory for animals and she basically like writes these curses for fun and then like destroys them uh, but one of this, these curses that she wrote against her coworker that she doesn't like gets like taken by this magical owl and if the owl dies the curse comes true so they basically need to go and find the owl so that he is not cursed because she didn't actually mean to curse him so loving all those witchy vibes and i feel like rachel griffin's books are very connected to nature which i enjoy like that kind of element in the witch stories as well so these two books i bought because i had had the first book it's probably the book that i have owned the longest on my physical tbr without reading and then i read it and i was like well now i need to read the sequel I haven't gone to the sequel yet but i plan to um and that is lady smoke and ember queen by laura sebastian this, these are the second and the third book in the Ash Princess series, and that series follows 
Theo. Her kingdom was captured when she was a child and her mother was slaughtered in front of her and she's kept as a captive by the people that have taken over and she really has to kind of like use her brains and her smarts to outsmart the enemy and I thought that that was really cool because a lot of times we see in these fantasies like more physical combat fighting out which I obviously love as well but it was really kind of cool to see like a brain power manipulation heroine as well so I think it was setting up for a really intriguing story and I really want to continue on because I really liked it and I've owned it for so long that I, I obviously had to buy the second two. I will get there eventually. Twin Crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber. Okay, I love the cover of this. It's so cute. Love the art. We follow two princesses and it's like supposed to be like a fantasy rom-com, which I love that. So Ren has basically been trained from birth to steal her sister's place on the throne. And then we also have Princess Rose who gets kidnapped and is taken away from the palace. And so she kind of like needs to get back in time for her coronation. So I don't think that these two sisters necessarily, like I don't know if she knows about her. Um, I will have to see how it works, but I love the whole like sisters vibe and the the whole like rom-com premise has me hooked So I really hope that I enjoyed this one because it seems so fun The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah um, Yes, I Was talking to my beautiful friend Taz and she was like this book is so good. So I was like Add to cart. Here it is And this is the first book in a new trilogy so we follow Luli, who is the Midnight Merchant, and she has a gin bodyguard, and she hunts and sells illegal magic, but she saves the life of a cowardly prince. Then she draws the attention of the Sultan. And so now she has been blackmailed into doing stuff for him. Yes. And I, I love this cover. Love this cover. Forging Silver into Stars by Bridget Kemmerer. Again, this is just a finished copy of the book that I talked about earlier. And then this is what the BNN like exclusive case design looks like. The Inadequate Air by Daniel L. Jensen, which is the third in the Bridge Kingdom series. So this follows a new couple. Instead, we are now following Lara's brother. And now we follow Zara, who's basically like on a quest for vengeance for her mother, her murdered mother. So there were a, quite a lot of intricate pol politics going on with the Bridge Kingdom. So you probably need to read the two books that come before this one before we pick up this one, but this one does follow like a new couple. Um, and The Bridge Kingdom was just absolutely fantastic. So I have really high hopes for this one. Uh, Master of Iron by Trisha Levenseller, sequel to Blade of Secrets. I already read it because I know I wanted to read it as soon as it came out and like, I'm so glad that I did. Trisha Levenseller is one of my favorite authors. Um, I just think her YA books are like so amazing and they just give me all the warm fuzzy feels. I've read all of them um, and mostly all of mine are signed as well because I went to one of those signing for her. So this is a sequel to Blade of Secrets and we follow Ziva who is a magical sword maker but she has really bad social anxiety so her sister Temra like tends to do most of like the customer facing stuff at the sword shop. However, she makes a sword for this warlord and it's called Secret Eater and it can basically get information out of any enemies when it's used and she gives it to this warlord and then realizes that the warlord is going to go and take over the world with this sword. So then she has to set out and with the help of a mercenary and a scholar, um, her and her sister go on this journey to get the sword back and like it's just such a good book about like identity and dealing with social anxiety and uh, like a really beautiful sisterly relationship and it just warmed my heart so much. I love this series so much. I love these characters. I am a Trisha Levin Seller stan. So, big fan of this. Also, I think her next book is going to be a companion novel to The Shadows Between Us, just FYI. I will be reading that the second I come down. All My Rage by Saba Tahir. I went to a signing for this one. I was so excited. Here we go here. This is a, I think this is her first contemporary because she usually writes fantasy, but it's maybe even more devastating than her fantasies. So it's following like two timelines. We have Mizba who got married in a an arranged match and then they go to the United States and they open a an inn and then we follow present day two teenagers, Sahudin and Noor and so like their best friends group is family and it's just following like their life and all of like the really serious things that they have to deal with. I went to see her speak about this book in person and it was really touching to me like I know that this book is going to handle a lot of heavy and dark topics 
and I absolutely can't wait to read it. I should probably also read, uh, what's the last one? A Sky Beyond the Storm, the last one in the Ember Quartet, but I'm like literally afraid. I'm afraid. I read Ember in the Ashes in like 2015 when it first came out. Like I am afraid of that series ending, but I love a sub up with all my heart, so I'll do it for her. I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuinson. This is another one that I went to a signing for in person with Taz, my Boston book signing buddy. Basically, we have this girl, Shara Wheeler, and she kisses a bunch of people and then she like dips and leaves them notes and they have to figure out what the heck happened to her. Uh, I think I got like a character card. Yeah, I got a character card at the signing too. I don't know which character that is. This is Casey McQuinson's first YA novel and I'm really excited to see like how they handle the switch in genre but I feel like it's just gonna be really heartfelt and cute and amazing. Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen. This is one that I read the first like 30 pages of and then put it down because I just wasn't in the mood for YA but what I read was really good so I will be getting back to this one because I don't want to like just DNF it forever. Um, I think this is the BNN exclusive it just has like this cool little no this isn't the BNN exclusive this is the first edition just has this cool case side there. So we have Violet who is a prophet for the king and she's basically kind of like a liar and people believe her because she's the prophet but then she kind of foretells something and gets herself involved with the prince and she is morally gray as a main character and I absolutely love that and I will love it when I read it I just need to get back to it now that I'm back in the YA mood. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. I was like so nervous to pick this up when it first came out because I'm like, is anything gonna live up to the original Hunger Games in my mind? But then I rewatched all of the Hunger Games movies and I was like, no, like, I need this for my collection. I will probably save it until closer to when the movie for this comes out and then read it then. But uh, yeah, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. And I've heard mixed things about it, so I don't know how it's gonna go, but I am a lifelong Hunger Games stan, so obviously I needed it for my collection. The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lim. I freaking loved Six Crimson Cranes when I read it last year. I just thought the writing was so beautiful. The cover is like chef's kiss amazing. So of course I needed to pick up the sequel. Uh, Six Crimson Cranes follows Shiori and she's cursed by her stepmother to basically not be able to speak. And she has this bowl over her head. Um, it is a, a retelling of the story, by the way. And all of her six brothers turn into cranes if she speaks then they will start dying so she is mute and she has to kind of go out and try and break this curse and it just like ended up being like so good some twists and turns that I didn't see coming and beautiful writing and there were some unexplained threads left for the sequel so of course I picked it up as soon as it came out Ooh, look at this little case stamp it's kind of hard to see on camera yeah it's like embossed in there um but yeah I absolutely love whoever does this art is doing a fantastic job because it's so beautiful uh, it says a journey to the kingdom of dragons a star-crossed love and a cursed pearl with the power to mend the world or break it yes we are getting dragons the hacienda by isabel canas again this is one that i want to pick up soon it's pitched as like mexican gothic meets rebecca i i have been having my eye on this ever since I saw it on the shelves. I was like, I love Mexican Gothic. This takes place during the overthrow of the Mexican government. And basically, we follow Beatrice and her father is executed. So this guy's like, hey, come marry me, live on my estate. So she's like, okay, she goes there. But then the estate is like really creepy and it's like a haunted hacienda and really like spooky and hor horrible things start happening. I, I love horror and like this kind of setting is just giving me everything that I want this spooky season. So this is also my fall TBR so please make sure to uh, check out that video as well. Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. This is a retelling of the um, Juniper Tree by the Grimm Brothers. I read a fairy tale in college and I've never seen a retelling of it and I really really wanted to read this. I've also heard great things. Um, if I like this I will probably also pick up The Wolf and the Woodsman. So we have Marlin Chin and her sisters and they're, she's, they're basically like kept inside by their father and they're like this wizard family and they're little more than a tourist attraction in a city that's like kind of like on the verge of industrialization. But at night Marlin Chin and her sisters sneak away to seek out the city's thrills. And in the city there is a monster lurking. 
I actually don't remember how the juniper tree goes. I do know I have an SAA about it, like somewhere on an external hard drive sitting around. Um, but I don't want to look it up until after I read this book because I know that it was like gruesome and had a twisted ending and I don't want to like ruin it for myself before I read this, but I'm sure as I read it I will remember things that happened in that fairy tale. This is The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. Um, this is the second book in the City of Brass. Yeah, this is the second book in the City of Brass. Um, it's called the David Bad Trilogy. I have City of Brass and so Maddie was unhauling some books and she has um, like a special edition of the series so she didn't need the regular edition. So I was like, I will take that. Thank you very much. And yeah, it's an adult fantasy that's based on, I think it's like takes place in the 1800s in Egypt and um, it involves jinn, which are some of my favorite like mythical creatures that I feel like I don't read about enough so and I've heard nothing but praise for the series honestly so yes I've heard this is amazing and I want to know what all the amazingness is about. The Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker again this was gifted to me by Maddie because she had a different edition from a book box and she's like I don't need this one here you go and I was like thank you very much I'll take that and that's what happens when you have bookish friends you just exchange books back and forth. So Ren is half British Reaper, half Japanese Shiganami, and so she doesn't like really fit in with the Reapers of the British society because of her heritage. So she goes to Japan, um, but she finds that she also has a hard time fitting in with the Japanese Shiganami as well. Shinigami? Shinigami? If I pronounce it wrong, I am so sorry. I am terrible about pr at pronunciations in every single language. So she kind of enters into a bargain with the, the Japanese goddess of death. Um, and then she has to hunt down this like super powerful yokai demon. So I've heard great things. I actually think that this author is local because she does advertise that she has some signed copies at our, uh, my local indie. So um, yeah, hopefully like I can get to a signing of hers or something one day, but I have this edition for now. I think I'm getting to the book that I already piled together for my fall TBR. So there's probably some repeats here, but in my dreams, I hold a knife by Ashley Winstead. This is about six friends and basically one of their friends died in college and they have a reunion and they have to figure out what the heck happened back then. So dark academia, mystery thriller. And then I also have The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead, which is her next book. I love like the neon on the inside. Um, this one has a podcast in it as well. So there's this girl and she escaped from a cult and with one other girl in their friend group. And then she finds out that the other girl has been murdered through a podcast. And so she like enlists the help of like the true crime podcasters to help her kind of like figure out what is going on. And I think that is a premise that sounds incredible. Babel by RF Kuang. You guys have probably seen this everywhere. I went to her signing and I'm obsessed with her. Here I have The Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Mueller. This one is really intriguing and I've seen Reagan from Peru's Project review it and I really want to read it. We have Charm who is in a house of ill repute and she basically is the emperor's personal concubine but when he's murdered she's like tasked with figuring out who killed him um, and then that will figure out who the heir is. So it just, I, it's been described as like this very like weird and enchanting fantasy and I think it's so intriguing and cool, a really cool concept. Okay, now on to some exclusive editions that I have acquired. Here we have Lore Olympus Volume 2. This is the BNN edition. Um, this is basically a Hades and Persephone retelling and I have been reading this comic on Webtoon since like 2018. So I was so, so, so excited when, oh look, that's a really beautiful page. So, so, so excited when it was getting a physical print and I'm gonna probably wait until more of them are out and then do like a read through physically but I've been collecting the Barnes Noble exclusive editions and obsessed. Here we have Light Lark, the aforementioned scandalous book. It is about the island of Light Lark that appears every 100 years and then the five rulers have to um, figure out how to try and break this curse. So that's all I'm gonna say. I do have the BNN exclusive edition with this cool case and I did pre-order it so I'm gonna get the uh, page overlays which I think are really, really cool pre-order incentive. Um, so yeah, I have that now. I just talked about this book but this is Violet Made of Thorns, the BNN edition. So as you can see, it has like the inverted color scheme with the title in violet and then the background being gray so I love collecting these BNN editions especially when they do color changes on the cover and then it has like the same case foiling. 
This Vicious Grace by Emily Fiede. I already read this one and I absolutely loved it. This is the Be Nan edition. It has like the yellow case with the lemon. Um, so this is like takes place on like an Italian inspired island and there is someone known as the Finstra and she's basically like she amplifies the power of the other people and so and they have to marry and then they're like this couple that will um what like ward off the demon plague that happens every like however many years every generation or so and so basically she's gone through multiple partners and has like killed them um so now she's trying to figure out like what the heck she's gonna do before literally the demon plague happens so yes self-explanatory this is the bnn exclusive edition of a court of silver flames paperback i don't really collect sarah damas in paperback i have all hardback but because it was the exclusive edition obviously i needed it again this is the dragon's promise by elizabeth lamb but i really wanted the uk edition because i think that the art for the uk edition is so so pretty and i have six crimson crayons already so they will go on the shelf together and it's interesting because usually uk books are smaller than us books but this one is much larger than the us book so it like did a little flipperoo there for the throne by hannah witten this is the follow-up to for the wolf um this is the being an exclusive i it's i think it just like has some bonus content at the end um have i read or on the first one, no. But I bought it because it was the BNN exclusive. This one is super exciting. It is The War of Two Queens by JLA. It is the Bookish Box edition. And basically I have been collecting these editions because I really love the artist Monolime art. And so I have been, I got like the first three when they came out and now I have this fourth one. And um, I know the Bookish Box has been having some like issues recently. So I'm really probably just going to try and like complete this set and I really haven't bought anything else from them and I don't really plan to buy anything else from them. The BNN exclusive edition of I Kissed Shara Wheeler. Again, this just is in purple. So I love the color change and this is what it looks like under the dust jacket. So cute. I have two copies of The Ballad of Never After. Here is the BNN exclusive edition. Um, this is the follow-up to Once Upon a Broken Heart, which is like the follow-up series or companion series to Caraval. So um, yeah, that's like so deep in the series. I don't, I don't really know what it's about, um, but I know it follows Evelyn and Jax. And so this is the pre-order dust jacket, which I also have for the first book. Um, but this is, I just put it over like the standard edition. And I'm very excited that I have these exclusives um, pre-ordered so that I could get them. And then the last book that I have to haul is the b and exclusive edition of Belladonna. It has the gold foil text and the purple case underneath. And then this is what the back looks like. So yes, um, because this is a new favorite of mine, collecting all of it. Oh yeah, this, this like end page is inverted as well. I, I also have the UK version on the way for my collection. So that is it. It is a lot of books, but it's been a very long time since I last had a book haul. Like I said, I had to buy a new shelf. And I don't feel bad about it because if it seems like a lot, one, it was over a lot of months, two, a lot of them were from publishers or are like review copies that I will probably pass along once I'm done, and three, I love collecting books. So that is all I have to haul today. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a fall themed emoji. It can be any fall emoji, any emoji that reminds you of fall, really. <laughs> Um, thank you for watching my fall haul. Let me know down below which of these books is your favorite out of all of them that I have hauled. And have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.